Dave Palumbo with RxMuscle.com. I'm here with Chris, the technician, Aceto, and we're here in Miami, Florida at the 2015 NPC National Bodybuilding Championships, and the men's prejudging just let out, Chris, and the super heavyweight class proved to be the most exciting of the contest, a two-man show between Sergio Oliva Jr., the myth's son himself, and Eddie Bracamontes. Ironically enough, two guys that you trained. Is this bothering plan bothering you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a two-man race, I mean, I think, and um, it, it, w it was exciting, uh, you know, and it's a contrast in physiques. Well, we did see a, we did see a final call out with uh, Jonathan Irizarry in there, so technically it's a three-man race, but I truly believe that it's between Eddie Bracamontes and Sergio Oliva Jr., yes. who is, uh, you know, I think leading by a little bit at this point. Yeah, you know, I, I, the, the scuttlebutt, I've asked around a couple people, um, and, you know, it comes down to, uh, you know, it seems like some people are, are saying Sergio's width in the lineup it was like a deciding factor. Um, that and uh, it, I, I think they said his, his front double where he opens up more, you know, it shows like a bigger structure. I think that Sergio Oliver Jr. has more potential. He's got more wow. But I do think that Eddie Bracamontes is in better shape. He's got a better tan and better presentation. Having said that, once again, sometimes wow factor does come into a lot of play. Obviously, Sergio's conditioning is excellent. Uh, Sergio's presentation is, is unique, almost like a Cedric McMillan. Yep. He likes to hit the poses the way he wants to hit them, yep, yep. which is not conventional. Well, well, artistry on Yeah, on now display. you could do that in, the, in your pre free judging round, excuse me, your free posing round, but sometimes in the pre judging it's, it's annoying. Kai Green had to kind of get out of that little bit of a uh, weird type of you know, pre judging posing. Who did you think? Now you could be completely honest, obviously, you help both guys. Who did you have after pre judging? Um, I, I think that Eddie would, I, I would probably give the edge to Eddie, and here's the reason why. When he first came out, I think he, he blew the roof off the auditorium in terms of his level of conditioning. And I am not like the glutes and ham guy. Like, I don't think shows should be one on glutes and hams, but a lot of times they are one on glutes and hams, mm -hmm. and his glutes and hams in the lineup, just standing, were just, mm -hmm. you know, inside out. Um, and he had, you know, really impressive quarter turns and polish, uh, so, for me, I thought that he, when he first came out that he, it was a, a clincher. Um, and I, I thought his condition would just uh, overwhelm everyone in the class. But when they compared them, what you could see is that Sergio's, uh, is he bigger? Like a bigger guy? I don't know bigger if it's more muscle. Bigger, bigger frame. frame. Bigger frame. And you can see that in the front lat spread, the back lat spread, and he has kind of a uh, a little bit of freak factor going on when he does that myth, the one from yeah, the I mean, back, from well, the back. He I was going to say, when he does the myth pose, I, he, he wins me all right there. I can't, I got to give it to him. Let's face it, he is a, a, the son of a legend, a three-time Mr. Olympia. Uh, it's got to count for something. You're, we're all historical buffs here. Every judge on that panel is a bodybuilder who's followed bodybuilding their whole life and probably looked up to Sergio when he was a kid. It's close between the two of them, and I think that the edge might go to Sergio because of that. I mean, hey, who would you rather see win the NPC National Bodybuilding Championships overall? Uh, you know, we know both guys are going to get pro cards. Yeah, which but is great. when you hear it's Sergio great. Oliver Jr. as the new national champion, it, it does have a little bit of wow to it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also going to be preparing for men's classical bodybuilding Patrick Schwarzenegger. <laughs> So no, I'm not. I heard uh, Derek Farnsworth is going to the classic bodybuilding. You know, I think a lot of people who are, I think classic bodybuilders is uh, you're going to see a lot of people. Victor from Prisk actually in. just told me our good friend Dr. Prisk is is, is doing he's the contemplate masters. Do they ever no, have a master's? He's class? doing classic uh, physique pro. You know, he said Jim Mannion asked him to do it, so and he's got a good physique for that too. Him and Farnsworth will be battling it out probably in that same uh, height weight class. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I still haven't mastered like how the weight has to fit into the height of the they're height. They're both about the same height, right? Yeah, no, they're both about the same height. Yeah, Marvin Ward. There you go. Marvin. Another, <laughs> but that's another great guy he is, there. He has got the classic. He's he, got. He, he may, made, he maybe made Olympia. Olympia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to get Ben Carson. I told earlier. I, me and Dave finished each other's sentence in terms yeah. of saying. Wow, this guy, guy looks great, or critique of someone, and I said, Ben Carson, of course, uh, who's somehow second in the polls, is uh, a famous neurosurgeon who re removed 
conjoined twins at the brain. That was his like that's his specialty. But he but he believes that there's the evolution doesn't exist, right? Well, the, the Earth is like uh, 450 years old, I think. <laughs> now, is it true that you you poached uh, Sergio Oliver Jr. away from George Farah? Um, no, I I did. They called me. I don't know why they called me. I don't know why. Uh, no, I, I saw Sergio at the Olympia, and uh, he was looking to make a change, and um, he said... Uh, so I give him the Rodin plan, right? <laughs> I give you the Rodin plan. And I, and I said, I don't care if you work with me or anyone. I mean, you could, you know, I could, and uh, the next day I saw him, I, I just like bumped into him, and uh, he said, you know, did you mean that, that you don't care? And I said, I mean, don't take it the wrong way, but... Yeah. You know, you, you're probably going to be a great bodybuilder. Did you tell him that you helped? Anyone. Did you tell him you helped Arnold beat his father? No, I didn't tell him uh, that. And for the seventy three, I thought like that was George the gave him that show. line, right? No, may, may have, may have. <laughs> but regardless, um, the battle really came down to those two. And with uh, Jonathan Irizarry, a close second, good comeback for him because last year he was like a different bodybuilder. Yeah, comes back. I think it was a mistake. I think he should have gone into that heavyweight class. A I, giant mistake. He should have dropped down to that heavyweight mistake. class, and he would have easily won that e class. E easily won. He he uh, he was very competitive here. He just he doesn't have the frame and size of Sergio, and he he doesn't have the like wacky condition that Eddie had. But if you take those two out, he would have won this class. But you can't take those two out. There's always going to be those two, you know, as super. So you got to move down. And then we got Rashid Aldraker, who is the biggest guy in the super heavyweight class. You know, freaky. arguably, I mean, this guy arguably comes a little tighter, sentence. and he 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 could, could have beat the whole class. Yeah, he could dominate. I was, I was. This is how good he is. Is that when I was watching the show, I I, I get I get chills just thinking of it now. Literally, when they moved him to the edge, I said, whew. Because you can't, if you if he's next to Eddie, you're gonna say he's too big for Eddie. Right. And Sergio, who's supposed to be big, if he's next to Sergio, he's bigger than Sergio. He's bigger than everyone in that class. So he's bigger than everyone. So I figured either he might get plunked down in the middle, but because their condition was better than his, maybe they'll put him on the edge. I definitely had him ahead of uh, Jonathan, as yeah. as good as Jonathan Irizarry, looked. Yeah, I, I'll never be able to say that name. How do you say? Irizarry. It? Irizarry. Irizarry. Yeah, Irizarry. You know, I told you know obviously I work with Rashid, and I told him I said, next year you got to come in, put in. What you put in, energy-wise, to the last three weeks, put it into the whole diet, and, oh. and no one will touch you. I mean, I, he's, he's I, got everything. Fully, he's got no weaknesses. He's 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 probably one of the better, or most dangerous super heavyweights mm. that I've seen in a long time. And I and I mean not only in the super heavyweight class here, but he could win this show and then go into a Europa show and win a show like that. Yeah. I really believe he's got that. Pro caliber yeah, muscle. For sure. Let's talk about the men's heavyweight class, where Charles Griffin was super impressive in this class. It was a weak class. Let's face it, there were guys, no one really delivered, but this guy had the most of what he needed to do to win this class. Shape, conditioning, a lot of muscle on his body. Um, but, you know, is he a door closer? No, but I think, once again, he was the best guy here tonight. Yeah, no, I thought he was the best, and I thought he was going to clearly win the class uh, until they started, like, this. that's why we have the comparisons, until they started comparing them, you know, I could see where he became vulnerable to the guy who ended up second, uh, who we'll talk about his tremendous shape and condition, but yeah, th he was a, you know, great winner. He's got a lot of, like, thick, dense muscle with a you know great taper and from behind his his hamstrings are just you know really thick and developed you don't see that much anymore thick and you see people yeah. with like detailed hams but you don't see like thick hams with thick glutes and you know everything popping in the right place in the back double he for me he was still the winner Devin Burgess superstar I mean this this guy has mm -hmm. got he's tall and usually tall guys don't do well or lanky when he starts hitting shots I mean he's his waist phenomenal. has got to be 26 inches and he is just incredible with that hands-on hip most muscular from the back, the glutes and hamstrings. I mean, you talk about, you know, a guy with genetic potential. This guy, if he puts on 20 pounds of muscle, he could be Mr. Olympia. Uh, that sounds ridiculous, you know, to people listening because, you know, they've never heard of him. This guy is like a rodent all the way where you, 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 when he comes out, you might say, well, he could use more muscle. The minute he gets compared to people, he looks way bigger than them. Mm. And he's got the back, he's got the development everywhere. He's got the craziest midsection. He's got a hands-on hips most, most muscular that looks like Tony Pearson with better pecs from like, <laughs> and better legs. Brian Buchanan. Yeah, Brian Buchanan. I mean, he's really a phenomenal bodybuilder. Um, he'll definitely get his pro card here. Yeah. And he'll, he'll probably 
be able to do some of these shows right off the bat and be in a, well, in a I good think I, th I think he should take some time off and put some muscle on. I mean, he takes the rest of the year off, maybe competes early 2017 because he's got tremendous shape and he can hold an enormous, enormous amount of muscle on his body. Enormous. When you can hold that kind of muscle on your body and come in with that kind of conditioning, dangerous, dangerous, yeah. dangerous. All right, let's talk about the men's light heavyweight class where Jermaine Todd uh, <laughs> seems to have seized the best of the class here. Chris, first of all, the lights went out. Literally the lights went out in the auditorium for that class and they could not get them yeah. back on. We had some light, but it was hard for me to tell. So I'm gonna defer to the judges on this because they were sitting a lot closer. But I thought Jermaine Todd had the win after pre-judging over Nick Medici, who is a former team national champion who won the Eastern USA yeah. uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Jermaine Todd. Um, he had the most. He had the the most amount of muscle in the in the class, and uh, and really the most amount of condition in the class. To 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 to. I mean, I thought it was clear cut. Um, I don't think the class was quote a super great class. Then again, it was in the dark, so I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, Nick Medici, who. To me, yeah, his, were, yeah. his waist can be a little small. I like him. He's got a lot of mass and, and gnarly muscle. I thought his conditioning might have been a little harder, flat. but I got to tell you, in the dark, he looked yeah, way yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. I think it really yeah, helped him, yeah. to be honest with you, because I think it pushed him ahead of a couple other guys that might have had a little better shape than him. But in the dark, he looked so gnarly you know, and grainy that I, I think it really helped him. And I'm not making a joke about it. You know, you got you to gotta roll with the conditions, yeah, right? Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you do. And, and you, you, it's not... You, you, you're right. I mean, when I, I thought when he first came out that there was uh, a flat look to him, and that's usually when guys do the Easterns mm -hmm. and they qualify and they come here. It's hard to. Well, he had trouble making weight, is what happened, because. And that's know. always difficult mm -hmm. when you when it's hard to make weight and you have to force your body down and you do a second show, you never as good as the first show. Meaning you can make the weight the first time, and then suddenly the second time it's easy to make weight and you say, oh. Easy, I must be in better condition, but Even your body's worse. starting to fall apart. Right, right. And that's probably what happened. Not that he fell apart, but I, I think he had a denser, harder look from the pictures that I saw At two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, he did, he did. But you know what, I think, you know, once again, the great thing about the NPC Nationals now, two pro cards in every class, so congratulations to those guys. Obviously, we're not going to know what happens. I think they might even, I think they'll probably rejudge this class to the tomorrow because yeah. they have to, because the light just was not fair. I did see a small little uh, gray mushroom cloud come off your computer. <laughs> I thought the, and it overheated. I plugged it in, it, it, it I, killed I the lights? the computer overheated and it may have caused the, the, the uh, I drew too much electricity, yeah. maybe. Or the, the Intergalactic League uh, president may have just pulled the plug somewhere <laughs> on the power, like outside the, the venue. You never know. Let's talk about the middleweight class, Chris. Pablo Ruiz. Maybe the most complete bodybuilder of the entire show, packing oodles of muscle, great tan, good presentation, gnarly conditioning, edging out David Robinson, I think. The, and David Robinson was our pick after we saw the individual posing routines. Yes. I thought after the individual, when they came out, I said I thought David Robinson was going to win clear cut. I thought there's no way this guy's going to lose this class. And what happened was, was it Pablo or Pablo? Pablo. Pablo, when he came, when when they were compared, he just his con level of conditioning, um, especially from behind. I never saw this guy before either. No, and that's what's I love to see guys come out of the woodwork and just dominate. He came in here. I mean, I don't even think it's close. No, I don't think it's close either. You know, if, if you're if you're conditioning buff and you're a density uh, buff, he had you know three out of out of the mandatories where he was just looked like cement. And how, how about David Robinson in classic physique next year in the pro ranks? Well, you know what, this is a guy who, like we've been talking about, some of these really good guys, if they added 20 pounds of muscle, they could be tremendous Doesn't pros. need to add 20 pounds of muscle in the classic physique division. Then he, he's, then a lot of these guys who think classic physique is going to be a, a cakewalk and are going to be in for a surprise that people like him switch over. Seriously dangerous, David Robinson, keep an eye on him. Let's talk about the men's middleweight class where Theodore Atkins Jr. was battling with John Durante. John's been competing for a number of years. I thought this was his best look ever. I thought he had nice um, lines. I yep. thought his presentation was professional. His legs are ridiculous. He was strided from behind. I thought Theodore Atkins Jr. has a lot more wow, but I thought his presentation hurt him a little bit. Yeah, you know, he, he, had, he does have more wow. He has more flow, for, for sure. He's got that Dexter look-alike going yeah, on. He's, 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 uh, 
he's 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 got dex the dex to look alike, but his present some some of the shots that he hit, you know, he presented his body a little odd or weird, yeah. and I think that hurt him. It sounds silly because you know if you you think if you got a physique like that, then it you know the poses come naturally, yeah. but they. Uh, he looked like he was didn't. overstimulated on stage a little bit. He yeah, was like, like getting like a little goofy. Yeah, 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 yeah. over trying. So. Um, you know, I, 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 again, I thought he might win the class, and then when they got compared, I think, uh, you know, he was, although he's in very good condition, he, he ended up being out-conditioned. And how many times have you said conditioning wins shows? And Durante also has the, the experience on stage. He's been doing this for a number of years. I thought this was his best look ever, and I think that John Durante's going to go home with the title. Uh, it doesn't really matter who wins, because both men will get that pro card, though. Yeah, no, it, it, I, I, I love that, that they're given two pro cards. Um, because there's Especially more than the depth we're seeing well, in these classes. Yeah, I mean, th by the way, the, the when we moved up in classes, people's conditioning started to move out. <laughs> but the lighter classes, from the the middleweights down, there were a lot of guys with tremendous. True, tremendous but all the winner, but all the winners seem oh, to yeah. be very oh, conditioned. The yes, the depth. Yeah, we'll but the depth in the lower classes yeah. was, you know, in terms of condition was beyond spot on. Talking about, Chris, amazingly deep classes, the men's lightweight class probably had 10 guys who on any ten. other year could have won that. that, that it's not an exaggeration. I mean, uh, I mean, Easily the top six. Easily the first call in the I mean, top six. You and six. I helped two guys that, 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 that didn't even really make it into that top three because that's how good the class was. Jose Fortuna, you know, just dominates this class. I mean, I think that he brings for a lightweight, I mean, oodles of muscle, tremendous conditioning. Uh, to win this class, you had to be that good. This might have been the most competitive class of the entire show. I, I, I agree. I think it was a, had the most depth, had the most level of completeness, most level of conditioning, lack of flaws. And the winner, you know, looking up there on stage, you know, left me thinking, how does someone like this guy make the weight? Meaning, you know, he looks too big for the class. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's super tight and he's taller. Mm. So you think it, does, it doesn't, doesn't add up. Well, you know, it added up to me because it added up to I, him too, but not. I mean, you couldn't predict this class from seeing the individual posings. You had you know, to see them together. together, together Once you yeah. saw these comparisons, then you saw the guys and you saw the flaws in some of the other guys. And, and, and Jose really, really raised his glass up a, another notch. And he'll come home with this victory. I'm pretty sure of that. And finally, Chris, in the men's bantam plate class, Ron Paramore uh, kind of slips into that class at the last minute. I think he had trouble making the weight. He does make the weight. He gets into this class. Uh, we didn't even know. We were calling him number 47 in, in the wrap-up. I should say in the play-by-play. He dominates this class, I think, and pretty easily, pretty candidly wins it. I mean, just terrific shape, small waist, doesn't look like a bantamweight. Talking no. about guys that look bigger than they really Absolutely. are. This guy really earned that win, I think. You know, he just, um, like the lightweight winner, he didn't look like he belonged in the class, meaning he looked like he was too too big, too much, too, too developed to be able to make that weight, which apparently he you know what? made it. The idea that he made it was very important because if this guy had been in the middle, in the lightweight class, he would not have placed. No, no. That's how, how, how tight the lightweight class. Someone good asked move me about for him to make that. Yeah, absolutely good move. And, and uh, you know, to get back to one more point, just to reiterate, that lightweight class, that, that's probably the top five. Anyone could have won two and three years ago this show. Easily. Uh, I said top 10. Yeah, that's yeah how good top 10. Were. Okay, well, so top 15 then. <laughs> but well, I agree with you. Well, once again, all the conditioning in the top two or three guys and all the classes were really admirable. Chris and I were, were super excited to, to critique yeah. it, to watch it. And you know what? It's not over. And it ain't over till it's over. The old Yogi Berra saying, well, it ain't over. Uh, tomorrow night will be the NPC National Bodybuilding Finals. We will be doing the live play-by-play -play and, of course, the final wrap-up. Until then, we are out of time. I'm Dave Palumbo with Chris the Technician Aceto here in Miami, Florida, for rxmuscle.com.